Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's lecture, we'll be discussing the casting and casting defects. This is very important chapter from exam point of view. Students, they often get confused in this topic. See, I have tried to make this chapter very easy to learn and understand by putting various images. Try to understand this chapter. If you feel any doubt, feel free to contact me. So let's start. If we look at the term casting, in layman's term, the casting is the manufacturing process in which liquid material, it is generally poured into a mold which contains a hollow cavity of desired shape for example, in our case, it will be a tooth or mold of tooth, and then it is allowed to solidify. The solidified part, it is known as casting, which is broken out of the mold to complete the process for use. Fine. In dentistry, the casting procedure is done to provide a metallic duplication of missing tooth structure with as much accuracy as possible. Now let's see what is the casting procedure, how it is done, and what are the defects associated with the casting procedure. See the casting procedure in dentistry, it was developed by Tagarit in 1907, very commonly asked in exams. So just remember it. And this is the centrifugal machine, which is used for the casting of dental casting alloys. Before going further to understand the casting, let's try to understand this procedure by images. See, suppose this is the tooth on which we need to place the crown. Fine. So we do the crown preparation. We take the impression of this preparation. Over this prepared tooth, we make this wax pattern. This wax pattern can be prepared in the oral cavity or on the cast. Fine. So accordingly, it will be direct if it is prepared in the oral cavity and indirect if we take the impression of the tooth, pour it, and then on the cast, we make the wax pattern. Clear? Now, this wax pattern is ready with us. So this form we want as our final restoration. Now, the next step of this procedure will be the sprueing of the wax pattern. Now, what is this? See, this is the sprue former. It's a hollow channel which is attached to the wax pattern. Basically, it provides a channel so that molten metal, it can flow into this area, which will be hollowed after we remove this wax pattern by keeping it in the oven. Clear? That I'll be explaining you later. So we make the wax pattern and then we attach the sprue former, which is a channel for the molten metal. Now, what is this reservoir? See, this is the reservoir which is attached on the sprue former. It has wider diameter and larger in size than the sprue former. What is the purpose of this reservoir? Basically, it's a reservoir of the molten metal so as to compensate the metal shrinkage during solidification. Suppose you are pouring a molten metal, it is filling the wax pattern space. Here, the metal, it still remains in the molten stage. So if at all metal is required, it provides the reservoir for molten metal. Fine. In this topic, lots of questions are asked in exams. For example, what should be the length of the screw former, diameter, angulation, reservoir, direct, indirect, the type of screw former. All these questions we'll be discussing in detail in further slides. This is our wax pattern, fine. This is the screw former which is attached to the wax pattern. Now we do the investment of this wax pattern. See, this is the investment material which hardens around the wax pattern. Fine. So depending upon the composition, this investment material can be of three types like gypsum bonded, phosphate bonded or ethyl silica based bonded. We'll be discussing all these in detail later. This wax pattern, it is invested in the investment material which hardens around it. Now what is this purple colored ring? It is the casting ring. See, in order to confine the investment material around the wax pattern, we use a casting ring. It is normally a cylindrical shape ring. What type of casting rings should be used? 
how much distance from casting ring to the top of the wax pattern and bottom of the wax pattern it should be there and what all other things we need to take care while placing the casting ring we'll be discussing later in this chapter in this i'm just giving you the idea of steps how do we prepare the casting so we prepare the structure then prepare the wax pattern then we attach the sprue former to the wax pattern invest it and place the casting ring so when we heat the investment the thermal expansion and hygroscopic expansion occurs to allow the mold expansion this is the mold uniform setting and hygroscopic expansion of the investment material because it's a gypsum based so hygroscopic expansion will be occurring a liner is placed this yellow one is the liner this liner is placed to compensate the expansion of the mold and the investment material usually this ring liner is made up of asbestos non asbestos like cellulose or ceramic or combination of these materials so once the investment has set for 1 hour it is ready for burn out so we place this investment in the oven what will happen in the oven this wax it will be removed from the investment material and this is the resultant hollow mold which we get after heating the wax pattern in the investment see for proper elimination of the wax this mold is placed in the furnace with the sprue hole facing downwards clear because of gravity the wax will be eliminated from this mold space and once all wax gets melted and lost from this mold this is the hollow mold space which is ready to receive the molten metal clear now this is the casting machine in which we place our mold and this is attached to the crucible in this crucible we place the gold alloy so this is the casting alloy fine and it is heated until it becomes bright orange in color and shiny in appearance once this alloy gets heated we rotate the casting machine and due to centrifugal force this molten alloy it flows into the sprue former and then into the empty mold which is formed by lost wax technique and in this image you can see this alloy which was present here when it's melted with the help of heat it flows and fills the mold space fine now this is our prepared casting and now we'll remove this casting ring we'll break this investment and take out this prepared casting we have taken it out of the investment fine this is our final casting fine now sprue former is still attached to this casting we remove this sprue former we cut it with the diamond burrs and after this we do the cleaning of casting quenching pickling all these steps we'll be discussing later and once we do all these steps we finish polish and place it on the prepared tooth structure so i hope all these steps are clear to you we do the tooth preparation and after this we prepare the wax pattern then we attach the sprue former to it so as to provide the channel for molten metal and after that we invest it in the investment material which can be gypsum bonded phosphate bonded or ethyl silica based we place it in the casting ring and there also we place the liner fine then we place it in the oven and when we place this casting ring in the oven the wax it gets lost due to heat and we get the empty mold and then with the help of casting machine we place the molten alloy in the crucible which fills the mold fine so this is how our casting is made so when we achieve our casting by filling the molten metal into the mold we finish polish clean and then place it on the tooth as the restoration so i hope this casting procedure is clear to you now we'll discuss all the important topics questions and points which are related to these topics which are commonly asked in exams clear 
So as we have seen, sprueing is the process of the attachment of the sprue former to the wax pattern. Fine. So this is our wax pattern, and these are the sprue formers. And if you recall, what is this? It is a reservoir. Fine. This sprue former it will provide the channel through which the molten metal it will flow into the prepared mold. Fine. And this reservoir. It acts as the reservoir of molten metal, so as to compensate for the metal shrinkage which occurs during the solidification. These sprue formers, these can be made up of wax, plastic, and metal. So, what are the materials from which sprue formers are made up of? Wax, plastic, and metal. The wax sprue formers they are preferred for the most of the castings. and these are the diameters which are available for wax sprue formers that is 2 mm 2.5 mm 4 mm the diameter of the sprue former it is directly proportional to the size of the casting see this wax sprue former it has low thermal conductivity so it does not distort the wax pattern and can be easily burnt out during the wax burn out so it need not to be removed but the problem with the wax sprue former is that it lacks the rigidity all these points you need to remember then comes the solid plastic sprue formers these are used for casting of alloys which use two stage burn out they are used with phosphate bonded investment material so these are used with two stage burn out and with phosphate bonded investment material and then the most preferred type of sprue formers are hollow plastic sprue formers so which type of sprue formers are most preferred one hollow plastic sprue formers they are preferred because they permit easy escape of gases fine so this is the reason why they are preferred in the sprueing due to their rigidity these can be used in casting of the fpds in one piece fine so this is the main advantage one is easy removal of gases another is due to their rigidity they can be used in a single piece in case of fpds the another type is the metal sprue former See this metal sprue former. It should be made up of non-rusting metal. Why non-rusting? So as to avoid the contamination of the wax during casting of the molten alloy. Fine. So all these different types of sprue formers, their positive and negative points you need to remember. So if we look at the requirements of sprue former, I think it's clear to you now. It should allow the molten wax to escape from the mold. when we are heating and placing it in the oven now the wax has been eliminated from the mold what will happen the molten metal will flow in the mold it should allow the molten metal to flow in the mold with little turbulence as little turbulence as possible fine and another main point which is required for a sprue former is that metal within it must remain molten slightly longer than the alloy that has been filled the mold if you remember we also place reservoir for this purpose now if we check the diameter of the sprue basically the larger diameters are recommended for better flow of molten metal into the mold see and if we check the dimensions it should be equal or thicker than the thickest area of wax pattern it should be equal or thicker than the thickest area of the wax pattern so that molten metal can flow easily into the wax pattern and what will happen if we use the narrower sprue former it can result in localized shrinkage porosity fine so this is how the diameter of sprue former affects the casting clear normally the diameter of sprue former it ranges from 8 gauge to 18 gauge needle fine and what does this mean 3 mm to 1 mm in diameter clear this is the diameter which is usually used for sprueing fine the next factor is location of the sprue see the sprue former it should be attached to the thickest portion of the wax pattern see this is the wax pattern fine this is the thickest portion this is the thin portion the sprue former it should be attached to the thickest portion of the wax pattern this attaching of the sprue former to the thickest portion it serves three purposes 
this helps in minimizing the turbulence of molten metal alloy when it enters into the empty mold fine it reduces the stresses in the wax during attachment of the screw former and it ensures that molten metal has filled the thinner section of mold first and then the thicker portion and in this image as you can see this is the thickest portion this is the thin portion if we attach the screw former into the thinnest portion what will happen the molten alloy it may fracture the investment in that area and may cause failure of the casting so mind it the screw former it should be connected to the thickest portion of the wax pattern fine if we look at the screw former direction see so this we have already seen that screw former should be attached to the bulkiest or the thickest part of the pattern but if we look at the angle it should be attached at 45 degrees to the thickest portion of the wax pattern as you can see in this image this is the thickest portion so this is attached at 45 degree to the bulkiest part of the pattern why this is so see suppose this is the wax pattern fine if this screw former is attached at 45 degree what will happen it will decrease the turbulence of the molten metal when it enters a mold so this molten metal it will flow easily into the all spaces of the mold and mind it screw former it should not be attached at 90 degree to the wax pattern what will happen if we attach the screw former 90 degree to the wax pattern so suppose the molten metal is flowing what will happen the pressure of molten metal it will cause concavity on the mold wall opposite to the point of screw attachment and this will cause convexity in the casting that will prevent it seating and it will result in the hot spot formation fine and what is this hot spot formation or suck back porosity see basically a hot spot is a area of localized pool of molten metal it's a localized area of pool of the molten metal after other areas of cast they have been solidified so what will happen the molten metal it will gather here there will be obstruction in the flow of the molten metal to the other parts of the mold as in case of 45 degree attachment you can see there is no turbulence the metal will enter this is the flared portion and the molten metal will disperse in the mold but if it is attached perpendicular there will be turbulence and this area will remain molten while the other areas they will get solidified this will result in suck back porosity or hot spot so mind it the direction of screw former it should be at 45 degree to the bulkiest portion of the pattern fine so just to summarize the point of attachment it should be smooth so as to minimize the turbulence it should be placed in the proximal portion which is the bulkiest portion of the wax pattern and this attachment should be flared especially for high density gold alloys which allows the minimum turbulence of the molten alloy and it also acts as the same way as that of reservoir i hope all this is clear to you now if we look at the length of the screw former see this is the casting ring in which we invest the wax pattern this is the open end of casting ring and this is the closed end fine the length of the screw former it should be such that the end of the wax pattern suppose this is the end of the wax pattern it should be 3 to 6.5 mm away from the open end of the casting ring why so this permits the investment to withstand the impact of molten alloy and also it allows the gases to escape find this much space it should be there when we place the when we invest the wax pattern there should be minimum of 6 mm fine what will happen if we make this length too short see the wax pattern removed from the end of casting ring the gases cannot be adequately vented to permit the inflow of molten metal there won't be enough space 
for escape of gases from this screw former and when we flow the molten metal in this they will get incorporated in the casting resulting in the porosity and if we make the length too long what will happen it will cause the internal porosity which is called as shrinkage porosity the metal it will get solidified in the screw former itself fine before reaching the wax pattern this will cause localized shrinkage porosity and thus preventing the more metal from entering into the mold so the ideal length it should be such that the end of the wax pattern and the open end of the casting ring it should have 6 mm of space between them fine this is very commonly asked so you need to remember for phosphate bonded investment this distance can be 3 to 4 mm and for gypsum bonded it is 6 mm but for phosphate bonded investment this distance can be 3 to 4 mm clear to the screw former we attach the reservoir this we have already seen that this reservoir it it acts as the pool of the molten metal and thus it prevents the localized shrinkage porosity here when we inflow the metal inside the pattern molten metal it should always solidified the first and reservoir should be solidified last why because it acts as a pool from which the molten metal can flow in the wax pattern fine so this reservoir it acts as a pool of the molten metal from which it can flow into the mold fine after we are done with the screwing of the wax pattern the screw is attached to the crucible former where is the crucible former this is the crucible former fine what is this it is a base of the casting in relation to the casting ring during the investment in this diagram you can see this green one is the crucible former to which this screw former is attached this crucible former it has the conical depression in the investment which guides the flow of the molten metal into the screw former clear So in this image this is the crucible former this is a screw former and this is the wax pattern this is the crucible former this is the screw former multiple screw formers reservoir and these are the wax patterns clear these crucible formers they are available as rubber crucible former metallic or plastic type clear then this whole attachment that is crucible former screw former along with the reservoir attached to it and the wax pattern this is invested in the casting ring fine these rings they are available in round or oval shape and if they are complete they can be rigid which are made up of metal plastic or they can be of flexible nature and if we look at the split rings they can be made up of rubber with or metal or plastic fine the another classification can be they are cylindrical or conical in nature this image is showing the different casting rings fine now if we look at the important points in relation to the casting ring the diameter of the casting ring it should be 5 to 10 mm greater than the widest portion of the wax pattern and it should be 6 mm higher than the end of the wax pattern this we have already seen that why it should be like that and if we look in this image it should be 5 to 10 mm wider than the widest portion of the wax pattern and this space it should be 6 mm clear and these sizes you need to remember that for single crown or inlay small casting rings are used they have the diameter of 32 mm for large fpds we need to use the large size casting rings which have the diameter of 63 mm clear see this casting ring it holds the investment in the place during setting and restricts the expansion of mold thermal expansion hygroscopic expansion or the normal expansion so as to permit the investment expansion a ring liner is placed inside the ring which allows the space for expansion of the investment material fine these ring liners they are traditionally made up of asbestos but the problem with these ring liner is that they are carcinogenic in nature fine 
then other ring liners are aluminum silicate ceramic liners or cellulose or paper liners so this image is showing the ring liner which is placed in the casting ring so as to permit the expansion of the investment material clear so if we look at the functions of ring liner it acts as a cushion which allows the mold expansion it permits the easy removal of investment after casting and when ring is carried from furnace to the casting machine it reduces the heat loss because it is poor conductor of heat fine so all these points you need to remember about ring liner the questions can come all of following are the functions of ring liner except or which of following is the function of ring liner clear so this is our wax pattern which has been attached to the screw former and this is further attached to the crucible former and this whole pattern it is invested in the casting ring and what is this gray color material it is the investment material so now let's discuss the investment materials see all these investment materials will be discussing in detail in another chapter but here in short we'll see that there are three types of investment material one is the gypsum bonded which is used for type 2 3 and 4 gold alloys and it can withstand temperature up to 700 degree centigrade other one is the phosphate bonded investment material which is used for metal ceramic frameworks fine and it can withstand the higher temperature the third one is the silica bonded investment material it can also withstand the high melting range and it is used for cast partial dentures fine the temperature and for which metal they are used you need to remember see as we know the waxes they are hydrophobic in nature now when we place the investment material on the waxes what will happen it will be difficult to wet the investment material on the wax surface that may result in the casting defect so to prevent that surfactants like soap is applied to the surface of the wax pattern this will reduce the surface tension and this reduction in the surface tension will increase the wettability of the investment material to the wax pattern investment material it can form intimate contact with the wax pattern this is done with the help of coating of the wax pattern with the surfactant like soap solution fine this investment material it can be mixed and invested with the help of manual investment technique we just mix it like the other plaster materials and it can be done with the help of vacuum fine the vacuum technique is a preferred one why because it causes less porosity it causes more tensile strength of the investment and the texture of cast which is produced by this method is smooth fine so all these are the advantages of vacuum technique of investing fine these are very commonly asked so you need to remember now when once the investment has set for 1 hour it is ready for burn out burn out of the wax from the wax pattern fine for this we place the casting ring into the oven fine for proper elimination of the wax the mold is placed in the furnace with the screw former placed downwards what will happen this will allow the wax elimination as liquid and more circulation of oxygen into the cavity this will react with the wax and form gases rather than the fine carbon by reacting with the wax fine so how do we carry out this burn out see for carrying out the burn out procedure or wax elimination procedure heating should be gradually done as 400 degree centigrade in 20 minutes fine and this temperature it is maintained for 30 minutes fine and for next 30 minutes temperature is raised to 700 degree centigrade which is further maintained for 30 minutes so total it is 1 hour procedure so for burn out for first 30 minutes the mold is kept at 400 degree centigrade 
and for next 30 minutes mold is kept at 700 degree centigrade fine so this is done for gypsum bonded investment but for phosphate bonded investment this heating is done up to 315 degree centigrade for 30 minutes and then increased to 750 to 900 degree centigrade for next 30 minutes clear because phosphate bonded investments, they can withstand the higher temperature. So they can be heated up to 900 degrees centigrade. This temperature, it will cause elimination of the wax from the wax pattern, leaving behind the empty mold, fine. So now if you remember, this is the casting ring and this we have invested the wax pattern and screw former. This is the ring liner. So if you remember, this was our, so if you remember, this was our arrangement before placing into the oven that this is the, in, this was our wax pattern. This was a screw former, reservoir. This is the crucible former. This is the casting ring and this is the casting ring liner. Fine, this is the ring liner. This is the investment material. We have placed it in the furnace by which, so we have invested this material in the furnace. So this investment we have kept in the furnace in which the temperatures you need to remember that 400 degree for first 30 minutes and 700 for first 30 minutes for phosphate bond, for gypsum bonded and 700 to 900 degree for phosphate bonded. Fine. This high temperature, it will cause this wax to flow out and this will leave the empty mold. So this is our empty mold space. This is placed in the crucible form in the casting machine. So when this investment with mold space, it is placed in the casting machine with the crucible former on one side. And in that crucible former, we place the gold alloy pellets. So for proper casting, we need to have the heat source which will melt the alloy and to push the alloy into the mold space, we need the casting force, which is produced by different types of machines, fine? Like centrifugal casting machine or air pressure casting machine. Now, if we look at the heat source for melting of the alloy, the heat source can be provided by the torch flame or by electricity. In torch flame, we can use the gas air, which uses propane as the main gas. It has the lowest temperature and most commonly used for inlays with type 1 and type 2 gold alloys. Then natural gas or oxygen, it can be used for PFM alloys. Then we can use acetylene gas. It has the highest temperature and it is used for base metal alloys. Fine. This gas air, it uses the propane. It has low temperature. It is used for type 1 and 2 gold alloys. Gas oxygen, it has high temperature. It is used for PFM alloys. Then air acetylene, oxygen acetylene. These have high temperature. These are used for base metal alloys. Fine. Then apart from the torch flame, if we check the electricity method, these machines, they use the resistance or induction method for alloy melting. Clear? Which methods do they use? Resistance or induction method. Clear? Now, if we look at the zones of blow torch flame, there are basically four zones. First is the mixing zone. As you can see here, it is the dark zone color and there is no heat is present. Air and gas, they are mixed here before combustion process, fine. Then next is the combustion zone. This green one is the combustion zone. This is the zone of partial combustion and it has the oxidizing nature. So because of its oxidizing nature, it should be kept away from the molten metal. Why? Because it can oxidize the melting alloy. Then third, this blue flame, it is the reducing zone, fine. This is dim blue in color. It is the hottest part of the flame. 
this blue color flame is the hottest part of the flame it is used for fusion of the casting alloys it is reducing in nature fine then this orange color zone it is the oxidizing zone it has the lower temperature than the reducing zone it oxidizes the metal so it should never be used for melting alloys so the questions which can be asked from this part are the names of the zone starting from inside to outside which zone we should use for melting of the alloy bluish zone why it should be used because of its hottest temperature and reducing nature which zones are oxidizing in nature the combustion zone and the oxidizing zone i hope all these are clear to you so till now we have seen the torch flame method when we check the electrical resistant heated casting machine what happens in this it's an electrical appliance which converts electric energy into heat the heating element which is present inside the heater it converts electric energy into the heat which melts the alloy clear basically electrical energy is converted into the heat energy so this image is showing the electrical resistance method for melting of the alloy this electrical method is used to melt the ceramic alloys where the alloy is automatically melted in a graphite crucible fine it is very convenient as compared to the blow torch and it also prevents the overheating of the alloy clear then the another electrical method is induction casting see it is used to melt the base metal alloys clear because of high melting temperature and here the centrifugal casting machine it is controlled by the electricity it's not manual it is controlled by electricity fine so these two things you need to remember in this with that this is used to melt the base metal alloys of high melting temperature and it is run by electricity when we spun the centrifugal machine the following forces they act during the casting process so that molten alloy it can be forced into the hollow mold the acceleration force of the centrifugal machine the centrifugal force and the gravitational force so these are the forces which act on the molten alloy so that it can fill the hollow mold which we prepared by lost wax technique clear see after completion of the casting the casting ring is removed from the casting machine and it is quenched so what is the function of quenching of the casting ring see quenching involves rapid cooling at temperature in the normal water bath or ice water bath so basically casting ring it is placed in water bath fine it can be of normal temperature or ice cold water what will happen by this see this rapid cooling it does not allow the sufficient time for atomic movements to form the ordered structure so this disordered structure it is retained at the room temperature which makes the casting soft and ductile for final adjustment fine basically this helps in forming the soft and ductile casting so basically the advantage of quenching is that when water comes in contact with the hot investment a violent reaction occurs and this investment becomes a soft granular and this facilitates the easy removal of the casting from the casting ring clear so now we are ready with the casting which is still present in the investment so to take it out we need to do the divesting fine how do we do it we need to cut 1 by 4 inch from the end of the ring to remove the casting from the investment and the remaining investment it can be removed by using air abrasive tool clear so after we remove the casting from the casting ring we do the cleaning of the casting see when we remove the casting from the casting ring the surface of casting it usually appears dark why because of presence of oxides or other contaminants which are present on the surface of casting fine 
this type of film this oxidized type of film it can be removed by method which is known as pickling very commonly asked in exams what is pickling pickling is a process in which the discolored casting is heated with an acid in test tube or beaker the commonly used acid is 50% hydrochloric acid solution this hydrochloric acid solution it causes removal of any residual investment and oxide coating which is present on the casting clear it is basically used for gypsum bonded investment clear but the problem with hydrochloric acid solution is that the fumes from the acids they can corrode the lab or metal furnishings and these fumes they pose the health hazards and they should be vented by a fume hood clear apart from hydrochloric acid the other acid which is used for pickling is sulfuric acid apart from this we can use ultrasonic devices but whatever device whatever acid we are using the best method of pickling is to place the casting in the test tube or any dappen dish and pour the acid over it fine and this pickling solution it should be renewed frequently why because it gets contaminated from the metal parts and other points which you need to take care while pickling are that in no case the casting it should be held with the steel tongs the reason for this is that when both casting and steel tongs they come in contact with the pickling solution this is the alloy this is the steel this is the acid it may contaminate the casting fine so how should we hold the casting we should use the tweezer fine rubber coated or teflon tweezers for holding the casting fine and one thing more you need to remember is that the pickling solution it is usually contaminated why this is because of presence of small amounts of copper which is dissolved from the previous castings so we need to renew the pickling solutions frequently fine we should not use the steel tongs because of another reason also that when steel tongs they come in contact with the electrolyte which is a pickling solution a small galvanic cell is created because of electrolytic reaction and the copper is deposited on the casting at the point where tongs grip it because of its contact so to prevent all these things we should remember that casting should be held with the proper instrument which should be rubber or the teflon coated and the casting solution it should be renewed frequently for proper pickling fine so we have casting with us but sprue former it is still attached to it so now we need to remove the sprue former from the casting it is removed with the help of double sided diamond disc fine and it is removed at the junction of sprue and the crown here now after removal of sprue we need to check the casting for any nodules fins or any projections if present and they have to be removed by using the micro motor at slow speed this avoids the chipping of the casting clear so this was all about the casting procedure i hope i have tried to make it easy to understand for you now just have a look at this 2 minutes video to correlate all the steps of casting which i have taught you this procedure shows the casting of a cast metal crown of a prepared tooth and the similar procedures are done for inlays onlays or other cast metal restorations in this you can see this is the prepared wax pattern and this is a casting of the cast metal crown now let's see all the steps starting from this wax pattern formation till the casting of the restoration here we are sprueing the wax pattern we are attaching the sprue former and reservoirs on the sprue former this These wax pattern and sprue former they are attached to the crucible former this is the casting ring 
this is the ring liner this ring liner is placed inside the casting ring this casting ring along with the ring liner is attached to the crucible former this is our investment material we are adding ideal liquid powder ratio and mixing it by vacuum method and pouring it for the investment so once the investment material is set we place the invested wax pattern in the oven for burn out procedure this is the crucible former we are placing the gold pellets in this now burn out is completed and we place this in the casting machine so we heat the alloy and alloy gets pushed into the hollow mold this is our prepared casting we quench it under running water now we do the de-westing by removing the investment material this is our prepared casting which is ready for finishing and polishing and this is our final casting which is ready for fitting on the prepared tooth surface I hope this chapter of casting procedure is clear to you. If you feel any doubt, feel free to contact me. Goodbye and take care.